What's up? Welcome to Backend Stuff. I'm Jacob Blitzo. Today, we are going to use Ecto Preload to fetch our user data and return it as an embedded map with our account struct. So let's go ahead and just open up our real deal API project. I've gotten a few questions asking why I separate account data from user data because I think everyone was thinking, well, now I have to make an extra query because account doesn't have everything we need. But if you remember in our schema, let's open up our user and our account schemas here. If you remember in our schema, we created the relationship between account and user. So we have our user account and it belongs to an account. And then our account has a has one user. So this relationship allows us to use Ecto preload. So if we jump over to our context file, we can not only do our query to get account, we can also use a query to get user data all in one function. So we can just pipe in a preload, super easy. So let's expand our real deal API right here. And let's go to our accounts context file. You'll see our account, this get account by ID. We're gonna leave this one here, but we're going to add something that's very similar right underneath. So let's go ahead and make a function underneath our get account. So def, and we'll call this get underscore full account. And this is going to also take an ID parameter and then do and end. We're going to query by ID and then we're gonna do our, we're gonna do repo dot one. So it will only return one object because our emails are unique. So there is only one object there, right? We're gonna call our account schema. And then underneath that, we're going to pipe in where opening parentheses and now the key we're looking for. So ID colon, and then we wanna do a pin operator because we're comparing here and we're querying for the ID we just passed in. And then if we just pipe in again and we do repo dot one, this will only return one account struct. So right now this will get an account just like this function up above. But since we have a nice relationship built between account and our user schemas, all we have to do now is pipe in a preload. So above repo dot one, let's just do another pipe and we just type in preload, we need to do opening square brackets, colon, and then the name of our schema which is user. So we're passing in the Atom version of our schema user. Boom, that's all we gotta do. So user data is now going to get returned with our account object. Let's jump over to our account view and we have to make a few adjustments on our JSON response so we can actually render the user data. So let's go ahead and go, um, expand real deal API web and then expand views and go to account view. Now we want to, let's just copy this render function where we're returning ID, email, and the hash password and underneath paste it. And we had to call it something different other than account.json. So do full underscore account as the name. And it's still only taking an account object. And now we don't need the hash password. We don't, need that information, especially on the front end. It's only something we need server side, so we don't ever have to return that. But so underneath email, we want to return our user object, right? So we need access to our user view. So up above in our alias, let's just do an opening curly brace. And then after account view, let's just send, let's make an alias to our user view and then close off those curly braces. And now we can just call render one. So render underscore one. What are we rendering? We wanna render our user struct that is embedded in our account. So we just get it from account.user. What view or what response are we rendering? It's going to be our user view. What is the name of the JSON view? So it is just user.json by default. So, and then save it. So that's calling our user response, which if we pull it up, user view. So we're rendering this view. We get the ID back, full name, gender, and biography. All right. Okay. So now we're ready to return user data. 
with our account. So let's jump into our controller. So account controller, we're going to just, so the endpoint where we're getting account by ID is calling this show function. So all we're going to do instead of get account by ID, you calling this function, we're going to call the function we just made. So get underscore full. I wonder if I saved it. Let's jump to our context command save and then back to our account controller. So get full account and then we're just going to pass in our ID. Now we're going to get an account with our user data embedded and we have to call the new JSON view we just created called full underscore account. Now save it and let's make sure our database is running. So open up that dashboard and my database is running. If yours isn't, press play. And now let's open up the terminal and CD into our project. So CD, mine's in documents, development, BS, and then the real deal API. And now let's run our project with mix space PHX dot server. And we are now running. Let's pull up our hopscotch and we will sign in to get a new token. Okay. And now let's do our get account by ID. I don't care about saving it anymore. Just get account by ID, don't save. And we're going to go over to, well, we don't need this body. I don't know why it doesn't update all the time, but we need to go to our headers and delete the old bearer token and put in our new one that we just copied. And our account ID is right here. We're going to put that up in the URL. So we're in our get by ID. So accounts forward slash by ID. And now put our account ID there. And now when we send this, we should get our account with a user struct inside. So hit send and boom, there we go. So we get our account email, our ID, and now all of our user information off of adding one line of code essentially in our context file. We learned how to use Ecto to preload another schema's data if we have a relationship between the two schemas. This now allows us to pick and choose what account and user data we want to send back with responses, which is pretty sweet. As always, if you need help or want to check out the solutions, check out that GitHub link in the description below. And if you have more questions or just want to hang out and chat, join my Discord server backend stuff. That link is in the description as well. If you want to learn how to build scalable production-ready APIs, hit that subscribe button now. See you next time.